In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears. The Lord saved him out of all his troubles. This is God, our God forever and ever. Give ear, O oh my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old. Things that we have heard and known That our fathers have told us We will tell the coming generation The glorious deeds of the Lord and His might And the wonders that he has done glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever Amen. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears. The Lord saved him out of all his troubles. This is God, our God forever and ever. to God on high. 
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, of your bountiful goodness, keep, us from, keep from us all things that may hurt us, that we, being ready in both body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish what you would have us do. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear from Holy Scripture. The Old Testament reading for the 19th Sunday after Trinity is from Genesis chapter 28. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he came to a certain place and stayed there that night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed. And behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and your offspring." Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We speak together the gradual appointed for the week. O Lord, I call upon you. Hasten me. Give ear to my voice when I call to you. Let my prayer be counted as incense before you and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 4. Put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, For we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory be to thee. Getting into a boat, 
Jesus crossed over and came to his own city. And behold, some people brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. And behold, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier, to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he then said to the paralytic, Rise, pick up your bed and go home. And he rose and went home. When the crowd saw it, they were afraid, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to men. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for our hymn of the day, Jesus Sinners Doth Receive.
Grace, mercy, and peace be yours today from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Children of the congregation. Yes, that means you. If you were here for VBS this summer, when we put on the whole armor of God, you might remember something. You might remember what you say when somebody says to you, I'm sorry. Most of the time we say, it's all right, or that's okay. Kids, those, what did you say? What do you say when somebody says, I'm sorry? I heard it. I forgive you. Forgiveness is easy to say for kids. I forgive you. You sure do. Forgiveness is also, it's easy for me to say. I said it not too long ago. Now, it is a privilege to do so, a holy privilege. But Christ also tells me to do so. But there's no trick to it. It's easy. It's printed in the bulletin. I can read the words in the bulletin. I can read the words in the hymnal. Words that come right from the Bible. That I forgive you. Your sins are forgiven. So also, forgiveness is easy for you to say. I did not say it was easy to do. I said it was easy to say. For example, you can say to your spouse, I forgive you. And all the steam from the anger you had just disappears, right? How can you stand by your word? How can you stand by your words of, I forgive you? You said it, but you don't feel very forgiving of your spouse. And we can verify that forgiveness by how we feel about it. You can verify the forgiveness by how you feel about it. It's either... Yeah, I've forgiven him. Or is he just going to do it again? Have you really forgiven them? Forgiveness is easy to say the words, but very, very difficult to actually do. And Jesus, in today's gospel... He's asking about which is easier to say, not to do. And he's comparing it against rise and walk. Now, rise and walk, that's actually hard to say. Even harder to do. In fact, it's it's impossible. You could... Don't get me wrong. You could say rise and walk. I could stand here and I could say to anyone using a walker, stand up and give me 20 jumping jacks. I can just say to somebody with a bad back, let's go play a a game of basketball. I could even say to a paralytic, rise and walk. You can say it. But it's hard. Because it will do no good. You'd be a fool. You'd look like a fool. Any ordinary man saying these things would be a blasphemer. Just as the scribes described Jesus. Why would it be so foolish? Well, just like forgiveness. There's no way you can stand by your word. You certainly are not going to be able to verify that you just performed a miracle. It's impossible for you to do. You just don't have that type of bodily healing authority. Creation, it seems, 
is not in your wheelhouse. So your sins are forgiven, rise and walk. They're both easy for Jesus to say. But how does such a man have divine authority to give the forgiveness that only God can give? How can such a man have divine authority to heal a paralytic? He does both with his word. Because his authority is his word, and his word is his authority. And he can stand by that word, because Jesus stood by that word to the point of death. Also, because of his word, sinners stood him up and nailed him to a tree. But you can verify this authority of Christ. You can verify his word because you can verify his resurrection. Even if you should deny it, dear skeptic of the resurrection, I dare you to study the word of God. I dare you that if you do not believe that Jesus rose from the dead, I dare you to study the how and why the Bible came together. And even if you were to study it historically, the resurrection, even if you were to study it outside of the word of God in the words of men, it's still verifiable. But men lie. Men don't always tell the truth. And quite simply, as in our gospel, mankind alone thinks evil in their hearts and they dismiss Jesus as any kind of divine authority, let alone his resurrection from the dead. Mankind alone lacks authority. So Jesus gives his authority by means of men. The end of our reading today, the last verse. And they glorified God, who had given such authority to men. Note that Matthew is speaking of men, not man, not just the single man of Jesus. In fact, in the verses that follow our gospel reading today, Jesus calls Matthew. Follow me. Matthew, speaking of men, God has given this authority to Jesus, the Son of Man, and Jesus will extend this same authority to other men, like Matthew, such as the authority of the keys of the church. Because the authority of the forgiveness of sins that so easily said, did not expire with the apostles. The authority of the Son of Man, the Word, never expires. Now, the keys of the church, they are an intricate and necessary part of the office of the holy ministry. And this is the job that I've been called to do. But I do not speak on my own authority. When I say those easy words, I forgive you. Why? Because I'm not the one who has to stand by that word. The standing up for that word has already been done for you. It's simple for me to say it. And I don't have the power in me to forgive people, and neither do you. And that's okay. But you can easily say it. I forgive you. The work of forgiveness, the doing of forgiveness, has been done for the life of the world in Jesus Christ crucified. So because I only speak on Christ's authority, I forgive you is easy for me to say. So you also go and forgive others because it's easy to say. 
Because you do not have to invent forgiveness on your own. It's comforting to know that you do not have to muster up the energy to forgive someone. You do not have to bear down on your own will. You do not have to bear down on your own heart to forgive someone. In other words, you do not have to go die on a cross to say, I forgive you. That's been done. You just repeat what you've been told by Jesus. I forgive you. And you just pass on the forgiveness that Jesus has given to you. There's no need to reinvent the wheel of forgiveness. You cannot do it any better than how Jesus has done it. And after you say these words of forgiveness to someone, you know what? There's going to be times that you have some anger left in your heart. You'll have the feeling that you really haven't quite forgiven them. So it's difficult to stand by your word. This is where faith and evil meet, as did in our gospel. The thinking of evil, after you've said faithful words, I forgive you. What should I say to that? from my office. What should a pastor tell you? What do I tell you? You who think evil in your hearts, yet are faithful Christians. What is a pastor to say who's been called to carry the keys of the church and administer the sacraments of Christ? What do I say to you who constantly has an angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other? It's easy, and I'll say it over and over again. In the, st in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus, I forgive you. I want to tell you one other thing. Rise and walk. With the authority of God and Jesus in his word, he promises you that your restoration includes the body, not just the soul. I can easily say, with the authority vested in Christ's word, that your restoration of body and soul will be fully complete one day. Rise and walk, that'll be easy to say, and it will be easy to do. 20 jumping jacks, pastor, no problem. A pickup game of basketball, let's go. The authority says so. And the Son of Man has already stood by his word. And he rose to the occasion. This can also be helpful to faithful Christians as we lead our lives. As we think of the time in our lives when things are the most difficult to say. What do you say at a deathbed to someone who is the furthest from being able to rise and walk? Finding those words to say on your own can be impossible. I approach this subject as a seminarian with great fear and with trepidation. So what do you do? You say what is easy. You tell them that their sins are forgiven. You tell them that they have a glorious new life in paradise that awaits them. And you tell them with great ease, I'll see you later. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our service continues with the offertory. Please stand as you're able.
with our offering. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, you are our God forever and ever. You are our salvation. And in Jesus Christ, your Son, you have delivered us out of all of our troubles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We glorify you, Lord God, that you have given such authority to men to forgive sins in the name of Jesus Christ, whose blood has made atonement for the sins of the world. Focus every word and deed of your ministers in the church toward this office of the keys, that the gospel may predominate in our worship and life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, restore to all Christian hearts the joy of your salvation by the blood of Christ, and make us eager to hear the voice of the gospel in the forgiveness of sins. So, in turn, lead every Christian household, husbands, wives, and children, to speak the truth with our neighbors and to forgive one another as Christ has forgiven us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, preserve the lives of our president, our governor, and all our leaders. Even as you rule the world by your mighty power, be pleased to give wisdom to our nation that it may have peace and success in accordance with your commandments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, your Son healed the sick and the broken. Hear our prayers for those in need among us, especially Kay, Dale, Mike, Helen, John, Gary, Jane, Carlton, Tom and Susan, John, Ginger, Norm and Carol, Steve, Laverna, Pat, Gladys, Carol, Joe, Doug, Amy, Pastor Vernick, Linda, Mark, Sherry Knotts, and family. Grant them healing now and resurrection at the last day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, how awesome is this place, the very house of God and the gate of heaven. For here, according to his word, your Son is bodily present with us in the sacrament of the altar. Bring us in repentance and faith to eat and drink worthily at his supper this day, and through its forgiveness and healing, put off the old self and be renewed in true righteousness and holiness. Lord, in your mercy... Hear our prayer. O Lord, just as in Adam all will die, so also in your Son, Christ, shall all be made alive. Bless the grief of the bereaved and fix their hope on the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend for all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who having created all things, took on human flesh, and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross, and rose from the dead to put an end to death. 
thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. to depart as we turn into our hymnals to 814, O oh, bless the Lord my soul, number 814.